guys, uh, update on my um, haversack day bag, kind of a take with you whenever you go bag. Um, so we'd have to add, to add to this is like a tarpaulin and sleeping bag, hammock set up. So just an, a, another rucksack. Right, so I've got like a, a day belt here. This belt here was made for me by Ron Swanson at Fox Company Prepping. If you read the back, it's got Wild Ginger Bruce, MTFU, Godfather. How cool is that? Um, with a double buckle on it, so it's a yeah, it's a tough old belt that's going to last forever. That is, um, and all tooled along. It's also faded the dye so it goes from dark to light to dark again. Very cool. Love it. Right, and then I'll undo it. Hang on. Show you the bits and bobs. Then also, Ron has been helping me out with um, my own bits of leather crafting and ans answering questions. So I've had a go at tooling. This is sort of the first bit I've done. So you've got a green man there, and then some sort of Celtic dragony type thing at the bottom. Um, and you stitched all the way around there, and then there's a second stitch there. And this is Laplander sheath. Uh, and a bit of tooling on the back as well. Then I've got, which you've probably seen before, is my video camera case with um, the wool inside, just to protect the camera that you're looking through. And I've got a little dump pouch there with a leather button with wild ginger bruce on it which is nice and tight pop that out so you roll that down and you've got that in your belt for gathering tinder and whatnot, or foraging mushrooms or whatever you sort of uh, whatever you're after at the time um, and that's a nice heavy um, like tent canvas this been waterproofed as well. That's that's just the belt kit. Then also, my wife um, contacted Ron, and he's made me this leather haversack day bag with a really strong leather belt strap with a buckle, so you can adjust the length and take it apart and put extra stuff on it. But the strap goes right round underneath, so it's going to take loads of weight. Right, so in the back there I've got a cutting board for when I do game prep and similar stuff. And I've also got a little stand for my zebra can that you put in a fire. So you stick that in the ground, like that, and you can stand a zebra can on it. Or stand and stick it under over a changir or whatever. The fastenings on the front, you know, sit me down a bit. There's a little bead there, you pull the bead up over the little antler buckles, which works really well because you slide these up and down depending on how much stuff's in the bag. Right, so first thing out is the trusty med kit. Um, I've done a video on this before, it's the usual um, bits and bobs, plasters burn gels and stuff. Um, I've also added this little gadget which is uh, temperature humidity. You open it up, you've got a compass, um, the ruler and the measuring thing for uh, ordnance survey maps. Um, it's also got a chintzy little torch on it which is better than nothing. But the bit I do like which is sort of a, I know it's a gimmick. If you get this pin and push that out, the little baby ferro rod, and you push it out there, and there's a little flint striker. Where are we? Goes back in there, and then the last one, which I would have picked to get out. There's a little whistle. 
which is not that loud, so you're probably going to die. But just for the thermometer, it's worth it. It was like a couple of quid off of uh, AliExpress. So, yeah, good idea. Um, quite useful. But yeah, med kit, always carry a med kit. Uh, in the top here, I've recently trying to get into uh, foraging mushrooms. Um, but this is actually quite a good little book. Um, unfortunately, they're drawings. They're not proper photos. Um, and mushrooms are very, very tricky. As soon as they get wet or they've been hanging around for a little while, they tend to look totally different. Um, so it's basically just to look at mushrooms, go, oh yeah, I think it's that, and then leave it well alone because I don't know enough about it. Um, the other book I carry is not in this is is a little food for free book, which is just pretty simple think common edibles, nettles, oak, red currants, rose hips, uh, samphire, sea beet, sea holly. So yeah, quite handy, but it's all edible stuff in there. Food for free, and it's a nice tiny little book to keep in your pocket. Um, also, uh, Ant from Man Stuff TV sent me this little um, UCO micro candle lantern that you put the uh, tea lights in. And I've got some citronella tea lights I'm going to stick in there that'll keep the, the bugs away. And it burns for, I think it burns for a good couple of hours. Um, I had a little play with it the other day. I came back and it had burnt out, so I'm not actually sure how long it did burn for. But it's a nice little uh, tough case as well, so it's not going to get damaged. A stainless steel water bottle with a stainless steel lid. Uh, there's a rubber gasket in there, but you can boil water, forage water in that. Um, I think that's a litre. And the jacket is removable, but this in this weather... You don't want your water freezing up, and you can, and it will double up as a hot water bottle as well if you're cold in your little hammock. Uh, just a little hammock chair. It's a sunglasses case. This is, um, which is a UK hammocks one, made of really light parachute material, but it's fine for just sort of a sit down and have a brew in the woods. Save you sitting on the wet floor and getting a wet ass. Uh, what other goodies we got? We got bundles of paracord. We've got the I've upgraded this stove now. We've got this stove with the hinges, like a bush box but cheaper and lighter. Yeah, and then you've got the I think these are about on a tenner, something like that. Come with a grill, done some modifications to it. Also got a titanium frying pan in there. Pretty handy. Oh, got the this little pouch is got them under it. Soil water filter. Which to be honest I have not used. Haven't been anywhere that's got decent running water to trust it yet. Um, I've got a little one man Chinese um, survival sleeping bag type thing in case I get stuck out there somehow. Um, they're still in there from when I went up um, the Brecon Beacons in case I got stuck. But, and there's a normal survival, just normal blanket in there as well. Just there's a yeah normal crappy one, and then there's the full full size sleeping bag. So that's that's the worst thing with uh, the beacons. It's just so random the weather. You just come out of nowhere, as it did in the video. Um, knife wires. I've got a Lansky um, World Legal in there. Um, some of them get nicked for carrying. Um, a lockable illegal bushcraft knife. Uh, coffee cup, uh, a crusader cup, 
and more power cord. Can't have enough power cord. And a plate. And then in here. And we have my right, got some um this is Trex oil, um, which is good for cooking and also good for cleaning your tools with. Because it's vegetable based, you can wipe it on your knives and stuff and it's not gonna go rancid and stink. Um, whereas like lard or dripping probably would. But it's good to put just a, a little coating of oil on your tools at, at the end of the night when you sort of sharpened everything up and give them a bit of care. So that's sort of the dual use thing in a nice little pot. Um, all you do is just get a big lump of Trex, stick it in there, bung it in the microwave, melt it down, leave it to dry, stick the lid on, good to go. You can refill it and it's not going to go off. Right, now I've got a little oil skin pouch which was, I think it's made by Outdoor Love for Brian. Uh, right, so in here I've got toothbrush, mini dental floss, um, chlorine tablets, tea bag, earplugs, um, antibacterial hand gel stuff, HP sauce, got to have HP sauce, and loads of coffees, and there's chewing gum and stuff in there as well. So it's basically a, a little bag full of bits and bobs. Then I've got my main fire kit, which is hexi blocks, Vaseline, um, there's cotton wool in there as well. Um, Storm matches, which if you don't know what storm matches, they're the super long matches that burn for ages, so if it's really, really windy. You can't blow them out. So if you can't, if you haven't lit your match by then, uh, lit your tinder by then, then tough, you will start another one. So there you go. back on but these are like 150 worth carrying also a lighter belt and braces a ferro rod um, one of these little compressed um, cloth things which are really good for tinder because they they're so crunched down if everything's sopping wet burn one of them uh, a candle a the flint striker that I made and hardened and from my old file. Look back on the videos. Um, glue sticks to melt down to use as glue instead of using trying to harvest pine resin. Got some magnesium and there's some little um, wax coated fibre stick things, string sort of things, which is good for getting a fibre going. And I've got my main, this tin here, you've got, <coughs> <coughs> that's me, right, there's a hole in there and a hole in there, so when you shut that lid, that is your charcloth tin to stick in the fire, the smoke will pour out of there, and then just keep putting the, as soon as that starts burning, just knock it out so as long as it's smoking, um, and I did a big reel of uh, like t-shirt material, which kind of worked pretty well. Denim would have been better but I didn't have any. And then I've just stuffed more cotton wool in there um, to go with the Vaseline. So that keeps it nice and dry but you just, just wind that round so the holes line up and then that will... And then in the bottom here we've got loads of flint, some more storm matches and just loads of random shards of flint. And then right on the bottom, um, this is like uh, about two metres by one metres, pound land sort of ground tarp, just the sort of thing you get out and step on outside your hammock, keep all your admin area on. And then a couple of uh, nice big bin bags, and these are huge, you could even get in them, make them into a poncho, make them into a shelter, um, and also put your rubbish in for when you go. And some tin foil also in the uh, zebra can. And the zebra cam mod as well 
is I've put this little latch on it there. So when the lid's up, you can actually pour your water out with it. So it's normal like that. You just lock it in place and you can pour with it. Because that is a big problem with these, where they're, uh, when they're doing that and you're trying to pour and grab the bottom of the... And the other thing that's usually in here, but it's not here at the moment because I washed it, is um, a welder's glove. Like that. So you can pick stuff up out of the fire, remove logs around. Um, doesn't weigh a lot and because that's leather, really good for stropping a knife on as well. Uh, and then front pouch, we've got a book uh, for when you're like, doing VRs and stuff, it's, it's always hard to remember when you get out in the woods and you're thinking, what the hell did he want? And there's another little Maxpedition all weather book and a pencil, a little knife, fork, and spoon, and an MTFU car sticker, which I'm ordering more of. Yeah, so that's, that's the bag. In better detail now, it's empty. And all the stitch around the edges. And it's amazingly waterproof, which um, when we went up um, the Brecon Beacons, I, was, I had this on my back and I was absolutely soaked to the skin. And, but everything inside it stayed dry, which I was amazed with because that the, the hail and rain was coming from like all angles, so dead chuffed. Anyway, guys, that's the uh, loadout for that. Um, I've just got to weigh it and let you know what it's like. What's it like for weight?